my name is Jason and this is just watches. Okay, good news and bad news. The good news is that when I was doing the review of the Timex MK1 mechanical, I told you guys I was going to take off the back of the watch to figure out what movement we had in here, and I was also able to do a partial teardown of the movement for you guys to see. The bad news is that I was unable to make a video of it, so this is just going to be a slideshow. I'm very new to the tinkering and servicing side of the hobby, and it is already extremely challenging without trying to film it. Trying to get a camera between me and the action proved too difficult for this go around. I'm not sure how much of this side of the hobby I'm going to incorporate into my channel, but if I do, I will try to figure out a way to record it in the future. All right, on to the slideshow. So here we have the watch with the snap-on case back removed. I was immediately struck by two things. First, this movement is skeletonized and has some minor but fun decoration, as you'll see later. And second, it's extraordinarily small. Next, we can see the movement is stamped with three lines, Timex, 20 joules, and China. While Timex uses muto movements in some of their other mechanical watches, this isn't the case here. I searched AliExpress for a similar movement and was able to, unable to find a similar 20 joule hand winding movement that also hacked. Perhaps this is a Timex commissioned and or designed movement that is being manufactured in China? I'm not really sure. If anyone recognizes this movement or knows more, please leave a comment below because I would love to know. Next we have the crown. It's very easy to remove by depressing a small button close to the stem. Here we have the dial next to the case and the crystal. Here is the dial with the hands removed. Next, I removed the spacer. Most movements use a spacer to hold the movement inside the case of the watch. This spacer was very large and very tall to compensate for the small size of the movement. However, it was very well designed. By loosening two dial screws, you can release the dial. You can see on the motion work side of the movement, the watch is also skeletonized and decorated. You will be able to see it more clearly in a few slides. All right, here we are on the, back on the other side of the movement. Here is the balance wheel removed. And now you can just make out the pallet under the balance wheel. Next, I removed the ratchet wheel and the crown wheel. Note the crown wheel is reverse threaded in this case, which is true on many watches. So you actually turn the opposite way to tighten and loosen the screw than you usually do. It's a small detail, but something you definitely want to keep in mind if you do get into watch tinkering. Here is the barrel bridge removed. That long strip in the middle is the click spring. This prevents the watch from unwinding and produces the audible click and tactile sensation of winding the watch. Here is the bridge for the train of wheels. Here is the train of wheels exposed. There are also a few other interesting details here. The mainspring barrel is also skeletonized, so you can see the mainspring inside. This is really cool. Next, that very small golden colored V is the balance hack. When you pull the crown out to set the time, that small lever impedes the balance wheel and stops the movement. Remember this piece because it's gonna come up again later. Here is the escape wheel, third wheel, and the fourth wheel, I believe. I'm not 100% on all the names yet, so please correct me if I'm wrong. With these wheels removed, the barrel bridge and center wheel remain. Here is the skeletonized mainspring barrel. You might be able to make out the small square around the edges of the hole in the middle. This is where the ratchet wheels fit through the barrel bridge and allows the mainspring to be wound. Here is the mainspring barrel removed from the movement. This is where I stopped on this side. My goal was just to get a feel for the movement, not to fully disassemble it. I have fully serviced a few watches, but since this one is brand new, I sated my curiosity at this point. By the way, you can just make out one of the dial screws at the 12 o'clock position. Here is a much better shot of the decoration on the motion work side. I did not disassemble the keyless works or remove that interesting plate that appears to be retaining the cannon pinion. Here are the parts I stripped down. There are a few more parts, for example the keyless works as well as the cannon pinion, minute wheel, and hour wheel. 
Take note here, the balance hacking lever is still attached to the main plate. I began reassembly and noticed the hacking lever was missing. One of the most challenging parts of watch tinkering is the infinitesimally small size of some of these components. They are so small that the slightest amount of force or the simplest break in concentration can leave them lost forever. The second I noticed it was gone, I froze. I carefully inspected my clothes and work area. Oftentimes a small piece like this can get stuck on your clothing without you realizing it. I sit up ever so slowly and carefully, looking down the whole time. I didn't see anything and mentally prepared for a very long search. However, I was very lucky in that that search didn't last long. I started with my seat, thinking it might have fallen off my shirt when I stood up, and was pleasantly surprised to find it there. Just to give you a sense of scale, here is that part next to a cap of a water bottle. You can see how something like this can very quickly and irreversibly be lost. The rest of the reassembly went without a hitch. And look at that, the movement is running at the same rate it was before I started this whole adventure. All right, that was a look inside the Timex MK1 Mechanical. If you guys enjoyed that type of content, let me know and I can weave more of it into this channel. As always, if you're enjoying the content of this channel, I invite you to subscribe. And if you like the content of this individual video, please give it a thumbs up. Until next time, my name is Jason, and this is Just Watches.